Hello and welcome again to From the Desk of. I'm Tim Moody. I'm the Public Information Officer with the Randolph County School System. I'm here with our Superintendent, Dr. Stephen Ganey. And Randolph Communications each month gives us the opportunity to, to get out in front of the community and share with you all some of the great things that are going on in our schools and throughout our school district. And uh, Dr. Ganey, as it seems like we say each month, there's always plenty going on, a lot of good news. and. Um, we had a board meeting this week. We'll talk about some of the highlights from that here in a moment. But one thing I want to sort of revisit, if I can, is our Leadership Reads program. And it's something I think we've talked about perhaps in previous interviews. It's where uh, our leaders, yourself included, and those from our leadership team, get out into our elementary schools and read to classrooms. And uh, I had my first chance to do it yesterday at Grace Chapel would you just share with us and with the community what it's like for you to, to be in the classrooms and share with those children? Well, Tim, I, I miss the classroom. I've missed the classroom ever since I left it a long time ago, over 20 years ago now. And, and so anytime I can get in the classrooms, when I visit schools, I visit classrooms. But to get in the classroom with the kids and to actually interact with them, um, it typically works out where teachers express interest in having a guest reader and um, they'll send the books over. And as I tell the kids, I do my homework. I read the books the night before as well because um, it's, it's interesting to see some of the some of the things the teachers have done with the, with the students and the questioning and the questions the kids ask me and sometimes I'll try to ask them questions and try to remember now am I doing this the way the teachers need me to do it so we don't ask too many yes no questions we ask maybe it's a thought provoking question with a longer answer than just a yes no but it's just really exciting to see uh, the students um, and, and, and see them in that learning environment and read to them and then it typically leads to some other discussions. I try to talk to them about the importance of reading when we're when we're done with whatever book we're reading and it's just been exciting and I just big thank you to all the teachers. Um, we started this back in the 13-14 school year somewhere around, around mid-year when you came and, and um, uh, been very welcomed by teachers in their classrooms and, and uh, as I say, they're the pros. I always kind of feel like um, they are the pros dealing with, with their children in classrooms. And, um, but just a chance to get in and interact with the kids. Uh, today I was in four classrooms in Ramsar. Yesterday I read to a grade level, third grade at Grace Chapel. I've spent time at Franklinville this year, Tabernacle, Farmer. Um, it, it, you know, there's another piece to it too. I don't think I'm doing my job as a superintendent if I'm not interacting with all facets of the school system and, and trying to understand what all different employees groups do to make this school system a great place. And, and I guess that's one of the things that kind of orients me back to, hey, we, the classroom is the most important part of our school system and don't get too far from it as a superintendent. And, and especially with the elementary students, you know, um, that's we're, we're building from, from elementary up and, and um, so it's just exciting to, to see the kids and be in those classrooms. And it's just a, really a, a good way for me to get in schools. You know, speaking of being in the schools, it, it's always interesting when you're in the schools to see what it actually takes to make a classroom operate and a school operate. And, and a big piece of that is funding. And we certainly are appreciative of the grant opportunities that we have. And I know that we have some exciting news in, in that regard that uh, I would like for you to share with us. Yes, we have learned of two grants that we were involved in that have been approved in the last month. The first one is a grant we were involved in with North Carolina A&T University. And uh, what this grant involves is um, people who have a four-year degree that want to enter the teaching profession, they're going to enroll at North Carolina A&T University and they're going to earn their teaching certification through an MAT degree, which is a Master's of Teaching degree. Our involvement is we're willing, we've said we were willing to host these individuals in their student teaching experience. So what it's going to lead to is over a three-year period, we're going to have about 30 student teachers from North Carolina A&T University in our schools. Mm -hmm. uh, this grant is going to cost us no money. Uh, our, only, our only role is to host the student teachers, and it's great for us because we recruit a lot through student teaching uh, experiences and all, and um, so we're going to get to get more potential teacher candidates in our schools, and, and um, they'll get to see what we're about, we'll get to see what they're about, and I think it's going to be a win for our school system and a win for North Carolina A&T University and for the individuals. Uh, but again, it, it will not cost us anything, and we're in that grant. It's, it's our school system and one other school system in North Carolina. The second grant we have is the one with UNCG, 
And this is a principal preparation grant, and we are involved with 10 other school systems in UNCG in this grant. And what happens with this grant is uh, we'll put out applications and um, we'll advertise it, and two individuals who are uh, currently employed with us can apply for our two spots. We have two spots and other systems have about that number. Some may have one, some may have two. But um, overall, there's going to be 22 individuals in this program at UNCG. And what will happen is they'll go through about a year of coursework, and then they'll do their year-long internship for their master's in school administration. And the beauty of this grant is the only thing it will cost the individual is the cost of their books. Their um, tuition will be covered by the grant. Their, um, their salary during their full year internship will be covered by the grant and by a little bit of money from us. So it's another way for us to work as we're continuing to look inside our system of where are our leaders and, and how we can develop leaders into uh, positions in the future, uh, particularly into assistant principal positions and principal positions in the future. So it was an exciting month. It's an opportunity to, uh, one, one opportunity is uh, the North Carolina A&T University grant is a, is a good opportunity for us to bring teachers in and then the UNCG grant is one that will allow us to develop two individuals into uh, school leaders in the future. Okay. And then staying on the subject of grants, this past Monday evening at our Board of Education work session, we had a presentation regarding the Golden Leaf community-based grants making application. So can you share with us um, the exciting news there? Well, it, this is uh, another <laughs> something that has developed in the last month. Uh, we're in a partnership with, uh, as we've done the Pathways to Prosperity and Health Sciences and also Advanced Manufacturing about a year and a half, two years ago, with Ashborough City Schools and Randolph Community College. Well, this Golden Leaf opportunity has come up and it will be used, if we get this grant, it will provide funding for the first Pathway to Prosperity, which was the Advanced Manufacturing um, partnership we did. And um, it's very exciting because it will lead to funding in the amount of $720,000 for our school system. Uh, 240000 for Ashborough City and 240000 for Randolph Community College. And um, I need to tell you the total amount of the grant we're pursuing is $1.2 million, but we also need to note and give credit to our commissioners because when you apply for this, your commissioners, your county has to be willing to, to put money into it, and I, I want to say it was about 20%. Um, so there's the Golden Leaf money, if we get this money, Golden Leaf money will account for $960,000 of the total, mm -hmm. and our commissioners will put in $240,000 out of their funds to make this go. So it's another example of our commissioners going to bat for our school systems and you know, Ashborough City and Randolph Community College and Randolph County School System. What are we going to use our money for? Well, we're going to use it to uh, upgrade the metals program at Randleman High School. It's been there for a while. We're going to upgrade the machinery and equipment and all there. And we're going to open a medals program at Eastern Randolph High School. And that's, you know, we're looking at opening that program in the fall of 17, 2017. So really exciting. I think Ashboro City Schools is going to use theirs, if I'm remembering the proposal. They're going to use theirs for a very, for an advanced manufacturing program that may not be quite as specialized as the medals programs, but um, if I'm remembering uh, Dr. Worrell's presentation. But you know, it's another example of this community coming together. Uh, Dr. Shackford, president of the community college, Dr. Worrell, the superintendent of Ashboro City Schools, and myself, we went in front of a committee, we presented our ideas. So um, it's another chance for the three uh, educational organizations to work together. But um, I don't want to lose sight of, we appreciate the Golden Leaf Foundation for uh, you know, making that $960,000 available for us if we get approval. But I also want to say thank you to the commissioners because the commissioners have put in $240,000 to make this project go too, and that was equally important. And Hal Johnson, our county manager, has been very involved with the process, guiding us through that process from step one. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing the result. I think it, they're thinking it may be March, February, March, before we learn if we get approval or not. But um, if we get that, that will be exciting, and it'll be another great opportunity for the kids in this county in, at the community college, our school system, Ashburn City Schools, because I didn't mention the community college will be upgrading some machinery they have in their advanced manufacturing programs as well with their funds. Okay. One of the things that we like to do in these interviews each month is to keep our community updated on any administrative announcements that uh, have taken place. And 
Uh, we had a couple of those this past Monday evening, so would you give us an update on those? Yes, uh, we named two assistant principals Monday night. Uh, Justine Carter is going to uh, fill vacancy that's coming up at Trinity High School. Justine's very talented, um, very excited. She's the lead teacher at the school right now. She has, has a good amount of time at Trinity High School and she's coming come back this year to Trinity, but uh, very excited about uh, her joining the administrative team at Trinity High School. And then Jody Allman will be the assistant principal at Ramser Elementary School. and, and uh, Jody's very talented. She's, she was with our system years ago. She came back to the area a couple years ago. She's been with us doing different things, different roles, particularly at Ramsar Elementary as an instructional coach. So uh, looking forward to her joining the administrative team at Ramsar Elementary. They are both top-notch individuals, very talented, and, and their, their addition to the administrative team at those schools it will only help our school system get better and both of those schools get better. So very excited about, about those two appointments. You know, uh, the big news um, across our state really uh, in the month of October has been Hurricane Matthew. And um, we have a number of school systems in the eastern part of the state that have been out of school for, for many, many days. Um, and obviously a storm of that magnitude, it's not beyond the realm of something like that that could happen to a Randolph County school system. We deal with snow and ice, but we've never really had to deal with anything like that. I think the community might be interested just to get your insight as a school district leader. When you have something to impact your school district in such a grand way and the impact that it has on families and teachers and schools, you're out of school, for several days, how do you begin, what steps do you take to try to begin to recover from a situation like that? Well, I, I think that um, the, the biggest thing you have to remember and, and is being patient as you ease back into situations. You know, we, we've had the bad ice storm and, and um, over time when, when you don't get things back into routine too quickly because you can't, um, things, you know, it, it gets difficult on parents because children aren't in school and it may be interfering with their work schedule, so you have to be sensitive to that, but really not easing back into it and tr not trying to force things when it's not, when, when it's not, things aren't ready for school to start back. Um, you know, and I think any of us in this business will be uh, way out of line not to at least stop when it's not your school system, but at least stop and and, and, and be sensitive to what our colleagues may be dealing with in the East. Uh, I've seen some pictures, um, I, you know, obviously it's back towards where I grew up. Uh, I, know, I know a lot of those areas, I've seen some pictures and it's just unbelievable. Um, um, I think back to the ice storm we had in March of 2014, um, that it did, it, did some, it did some damage to us and, and as a school system. And, 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 and by the time that came along, we had really been through a tough winter. Um, so what I really like about the group of superintendents in this state is I think, I think everybody understands that, you know, you can't just not, you know, be sensitive to something going on in another system in the, in the, in the state because, you know, with one change of direction of the wind, it can be your school system. And, um, uh, you know, I, I, my heart goes out to them because I know that those individuals down there leading those school systems are trying to figure out what are they going to do with missed instructional time? Uh, how are we going to get the kids back in routine? So one of the, the biggest things about school to me always has been getting, getting the students in routine. And, and, and I love the first day of school and seeing how quick the classes are, are you know, operating as if it was the 30th day of school. And you've heard me mention that. It seems like we've been in school two months. You've heard me say that right after school starts. And I always took great pride in that as a principal. And so that's going to be their biggest challenge is getting the school back in, the schools back in routine, in my opinion. Uh, once, you know, and I say their biggest challenge, right now their challenges are getting the facilities ready. But um, once all that happens, you still got another challenge. And, and um, some of them have been out for two weeks and, and plus, two weeks plus now, and as far as time goes. And so I just, um, anything anybody can do to help you know, when you, I've seen uh, bottled water drives. Um, I've seen uh, the other night I was watching the news and saw where some of our EMS guys went down to an area of the state. And, you know, I think there's twofold here. 
Anything we can do to help is important. And when we see people in our community helping, we need to make sure we're telling them thank you and we're noticing the great efforts they're doing because you don't want those efforts to stop down the road for future future situations. So um, I've seen, a, I've, I've, I've heard and seen a lot of things going on from this community to help individuals that way into the East. And, and I appreciate it because yes, it, it, I, I know a lot about that area. Well, Dr. Ganyan, we launched a new program uh, here just a couple of weeks ago. It's called our SCORE Partnership Program. SCORE is an acronym for Supporting Continuously Our Randolph Educators. And it's really an opportunity for businesses in our community to show their support to our employees by offering discounts, uh, whether it's a restaurant or some other type of business. And we have launched a SCORE Partnership page on our website where we now have a listing um, of all the discounts that are available. I know in just talking with our employees, that's a question I'm often asked is, does so-and-so give us a discount? And so now we've gotten those consolidated into a single place. And I know it's important to you to have that kind of positive community relationship with these businesses. Yeah, that's, that is an exciting program, Tim. And, and you've been very involved, and I appreciate your work with it. Um, we do have a page now on our webpage, and we have... We have uh, businesses who have uh, signed on as partners with that partnership, and, and now um, if, if our employees want to take advantage of a discount, they only have to show their ID badge, uh, school system ID badge. But it goes a little bigger, Tim, and, and, and you and I have talked, and I want us to be a partner with this community. And I, you know, we have limits what we can and can't do, and they have, and businesses have limits what they can and can't do. Mm -hmm. But I want us to be a partner, and I'm so excited to see their business name on our stuff mm -hmm. and I just hope we can continue to push our school system's name and, and what's going on in our school system out in the community on, as, on you know, as many years as we can for people to learn more about what we're doing because Tim when you do that you have to accept you take the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. Every call you can learn something from every call or every email whether it's about something you're doing good or something that someone thinks you're not doing good and this partnership will only increase the feedback we'll get from, from the community as we continue to open the doors of the school system and say, we're, we're doing everything we can to get better, and we want feedback from you, and we want to be a partner with you. So it's ex exciting to me, Tim. To, when I pull that page up and see the partners we have, I dream about the number of partners we're going to have when this is, you know, plays out over several more months. And we've got, you know, I know that you've been working um, – we work very closely in the Ashborough area, but I know you've reached out in the Archdale area and you're going to reach out into different different areas of the county and, and make sure those businesses know about this. And so it's exciting. It'll be exciting to see where it grows because we have a lot of people that are supporting us and we just want to continue to be par good partners with them. Right. And we certainly are grateful to all of our community partners. Perhaps it's in the form of a discount. Per perhaps it's in volunteer work in our schools, any number of ways. Uh, we just appreciate so much uh, the fostering of good, healthy, positive relationships with those in our community. And we're thankful to Randolph Communications for giving us this opportunity each month to get before you and, uh, and share with you the things that are going on. Uh, it's, it's been a, a great school year so far, and we look forward to, to meeting up with you again in November. Thank you so much.